Welcome back, Cubs. This is Dire Wolf. Today we're going to be responding to Michael Rollins, a general failure as a person who also failed as a musician and failed as an unfunny feminist, who is going on to most likely fail as a seaman. If you watch his videos, you'll see his general strategy as a YouTuber is to take a rational claim and then to straw man the hell out of that claim to the point where he's completely indistinguishable from the original argument. He attempts to disguise his straw man arguments under a facade of satire or comedy. One of his common tactics is to do nothing more than put on a funny voice while misrepresenting someone's argument. He also uses the explanation of satire and comedy as a justification for deceptively editing someone's words to change their argument. He avoids debating the actual arguments and instead debates the strawman arguments because he lacks the intelligence to debate the actual argument. Michael Rollins is the least popular out of the Cult of Christie YouTube feminists, which is really saying something. That means he's less entertaining and less convincing than Christie Winters. In addition to being incapable of debating against legitimate arguments. If you disagree with him, similar to all social justice warriors and feminists, he will call you a bigot of some sort. Because that's how pathetically infantile Michael Rollins is. And now recently he posted a video showing he has no understanding of biology. He tried to liken gender and sex as being the same thing and he tried to disprove the binary nature of sex. And that is what I'm going to be responding to today. Hit it Michael. Hi. Hello Michael. So I don't understand why people have a problem with the idea of multiple genders or sexes. My goal, those are two very different things. Gender refers to the social and cultural differences between men and women. Because it's social and cultural, it can change over time, and gender roles have changed over time and are different in different cultures around the world. And there's many ways someone can express their gender. And if you want to assign a title to every slight difference in the way someone might express their gender, that might seem silly to me, but it doesn't affect me, so I don't have a problem with it. The only reason someone like me might have a problem with your multiple gender theory is if you use that theory to try to force us to change the way we talk and the way we behave. Once you start telling people what words they can and cannot use, you've gone too far. The word you meant to use in relation to the binary is the word sex. Sex is a biological term that refers to either male or female. These terms organize all of humanity by their reproductive function. You either produce sperm and are male or you produce eggs and are female. This term has nothing to do with your personal identity or your cultural behaviors. Being either male or female is the normal state of humanity. Anything other than that is an abnormality. One example of an abnormality would be any one of the intersex birth defects you could be born with. Such defects are as rare as 1 in 1500 to 1 in 2000 babies born. Just because you're born intersex does not make you a new gender, it means you have a birth defect. And when I say you have a birth defect, it doesn't mean you're any less of a person. There's many people with many kinds of birth defects. They're still people, and they aren't a new gender for every birth defect. Firstly, it confuses me as an appreciator of science. Just goes to show you can appreciate something you have no understanding of. Hey Michael, this is another birth defect. Does this mean we have another undiscovered sex? Back in the day when I used to argue all the time with creationists online, it always used to baffle me the ridiculous amount of black and white thinking that these people would employ, but science shows us that the universe is not a black and white place. False. There are many things in science that are black and white. They're called constants. And sometimes they're even called laws. They're measurable and reproducible facts based on all available evidence. It's a crazy diverse place full of strange and wonderful things that don't always conform to neat little boxes. That's why, for example, the tree of life is so complicated and continues to get more complicated the more we discover about the world. The deeper we look into the philology of these things, the deeper we go, the more we see that the world doesn't fit into tiny, neat little boxes. You are digressing into irrelevancy. Michael, please join us over here at the original topic. We were talking about the sex binary. So why is it then that people have such a hard time accepting that maybe, just maybe, our ideas about gender and sex aren't perfect? Those two words are not interchangeable. Please stop using them as if they are the same thing. And if the entire scientific community is wrong, please show us your evidence that our understanding of either sex or genders is wrong. That may be our simplistic binary view of something as complicated as personal identity. Your personal identity has nothing to do with the binary sexes. We aren't talking about someone's personal identity. There's an infinite number of personal identities because there's a new identity for each individual person who has an identity. Can you please stop throwing around terms that you don't understand and that are disconjointed from the original topic? Might not be as cut and dry as we think it is. 
How could it be that someone is perfectly willing to accept that the universe is this amazing, beautiful, complex, mysterious place full of gray areas and weird shit that makes no sense, but then as soon as we talk about biological sex, nope, we got that perfectly right and there's only two. Well, I hate to break it to you, buddy, but you're wrong. First of all, you're ignoring intersex people. No, I just finished telling you about intersex people. Biologists classify intersex people as having a birth defect, not as a separate sex. A normal person has a karyotype of XY or XX and have 46 chromosomes. A karyotype is a picture representation of one's chromosomes, either the XX or XY. The difference with someone who is intersex is they have additional chromosomes and a different karyotype. Having more than 46 chromosomes has an abnormal and negative effect on a person's development. A person who is intersex can have 47 48 or 49 chromosomes. These additional chromosomes affect the person's karyotype by adding any combination of X and Y chromosomes, which creates a birth defect, not a new sex. This woman has a tail. Is she a new, undiscovered sex, or is it just a birth defect? Intersex is a catch-all term for people who are born with a biological sex that does not align with the traditional sexual binary. And it's not one distinct category either. There are a variety of different biological sexes that can be classed under intersex. It's almost as if it was some sort of, you know, spectrum or something. It is nothing like a spectrum. There's a limited number of karyotypes that will result in a viable human being despite their deformity. A spectrum implies there's a wide variety of workable combinations, which there are not. And did you know that there are more than two different karyotypes? A karyotype is a picture of a person's set of chromosomes, and I was always under the impression that these manifest in only two ways, XX and XY, male and female. Eh, wrong. Uh, the six most common ways that these manifest are X, XX, XXY, XY, XYY, and XXXY. Man, who knew that human biology could be so complicated and not at all black and white? Those additional karyotypes create birth defects, not new sexes. That's pretty black and white. Hmm. I've also heard people acknowledge that intersex people exist, but they don't count that as a separate sex. I mean... What? 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 <laughs> you acknowledge that there are people who exist whose biology doesn't align with a strict binary, but that doesn't count as a different sex because reasons. Reasons like they don't fit the definition of a sex and they are the result of abnormal development. Since you fancy yourself a lover of language, I expect you know the definition of the word. That's like saying, yes, I know that there are multiple different flavors of chocolate, but the only real flavors are 70% cocoa and almond. All those other ones, uh, they, they, they don't count. No, they are all flavors, and they're all as equally as legitimate as each other, and your opinions don't factor in in the matter. Uh, except for orange-flavored chocolate. Fuck that shit. Biology is a bit more complicated than ice cream flavors. If you're going to say our understanding of modern biology is wrong, you need to back it up with some evidence, not just a really stupid analogy. As the great Tim Minchin once said, science adjusts its views based on what's observed. Faith is the denial of observation so that belief can be preserved. And okay, maybe you've only seen one weenie and a few cha in your time, but your personal experience on these matters doesn't trump that of millions of other people and, you know, science. You're the one that's trying to take scientific findings and the definition of words and make them fit your narrative when they don't. It's obvious all you looked up was what were the different variations of chromosomes someone could be born with. You didn't look up what those different karyotypes were classified as. They're syndromes. They're birth defects. They're not classified as separate sexes. And I'm not surprised you didn't know that because you didn't know the meaning of sex or gender and that they're not the same thing. Fact is, there are people who are born that do not conform to the strict binary of biological sex and gender that you are so desperate to cling to. And it seems ludicrous to me that one would hear this information and then continue to believe there are only two sexes. Blind faith at its worst. Uh, secondly, it confuses me as a lover of language. Constant objections I often hear are things like, These people are just making up a bunch of words. They're using words how they're not supposed to be used. 64 pronouns, that's too many. If we allow this to happen, what's going to stop people from identifying as tractors and fairies and dragons and shit? And these are, of course, super silly objections. That's a nice straw man you got there. It'd be a shame if someone ignored it. For one, all words are made up. There are no words that exist as omnipresent beings outside the existence of humanity. Words exist because of us. 
So what is wrong with making up some new words to describe new things that we don't yet have words for? As we learn and discover more about the world, we're going to need new words to describe those new things that we discover. Intersex is not a new thing, and we already have a word for it. Intersex. You don't need to change the meaning of the word sex or add a bunch of new sexes to validate the creating of a whole bunch of new gender identities. You can create any gender identity you want. You can call yourself whatever you want. I don't care. I also don't need to call you those things. A new gender identity does not require a new sex. They're not related. They are different terms. I don't see people complaining about scientists always making up new words to describe new species of animals. But the words aren't coming about naturally. Meh. Who cares? If there is a thing that needs a word to describe it, then why not make up a new word for that thing? Why does it matter if it hasn't come about through years of language evolution or some bullshit? And why should it matter if there's dozens of new pronouns? Oh no, dozens of new words to describe dozens of new things. Oh, the humanities! Because scientists are finding new species and new things that were never discovered before. But they have not found new sexes. It all smacks to me of people complaining about something that has absolutely no effect on them. Different people who are different from you, who want to do life differently from you, and that offends some people for some reason. Why does it matter to you so much if a person doesn't conform to the rigid gender identifiers that are ingrained to us from birth by a culture that is obsessed with cramming people into tiny little boxes of conformity? Why does it matter to you if someone wants to be addressed as G or Ni or V or Spivak? I mean, I can understand not wanting to misgender people, uh, not that that's what these motherfuckers care about, but why does it matter to you if someone self-identifies as that? It bothers people when there are laws that are passed that give legal ramifications for someone misgendering someone. When it becomes socially acceptable to punish someone when they don't use the made-up word you created for yourself to describe you. When your special snowflake sensitivity starts affecting our lives, then it becomes our problem. It's like the most ridiculous cis privilege to be lucky enough to be born cis and then expect everyone else to conform to that. And that makes you the biggest asshole. And lastly, it confuses me as a normal, empathetic human being. As someone who cares about other people and respects that my identity is not an authority on how other people should self-identify, it makes no sense to me that people would be so adamantly against even entertaining the idea that gender and biological sex might be slightly more complicated than they think it is, that other people might have differing life experiences from them, and that other people's minds and bodies might be different from how theirs are. To me, it's just the same as any other bigotry. People who don't like or are uncomfortable with other people who are different from them or different from the norm. Different culture, different race, different sexual orientation, different gender, whatever. When people discover that there are other people in the world who do life differently from them, it makes them scared for some reason and, and makes them feel like their way of life is in danger somehow. And God forbid we allow these other people to be treated the same as us. Allowing women to vote? Society's gonna crumble! Allowing gays to marry? Society's gonna crumble! Allowing black people to sit at the front of the bus? Society's gonna crumble! Acknowledging that trans, intersex, and non-binary, etc. are just as human and entitled to their own identity as everybody else? Society's gonna crumble! <laughs> surprise, surprise, Michael. You call me a bigot to disqualify my opinions, and you constructed quite an impressive straw man. And in doing so, you associate my opinions with racism and sexism. You gave no counter argument to the argument that I and people like me have been making. And with the absence of evidence, it's very obvious you're wrong. Talking about your feelings about this topic is not evidence. I try to avoid watching Michael Rowland's videos because he's an insufferable moronic douchebag with no good arguments. Half his videos is sarcastic nonsense that is, there's no point in refuting. And it's sad to say, but this video might be one of his better quote unquote arguments and it was terrible. I only responded to this video because one of my cubs, and you know who you are, asked me if I would. But I can make a regular thing of responding to Rowland's because he doesn't actually have any real arguments for me to respond to. He's an incurable ideologue who prays at the feet of Christy Winters to the god of feminism. Hope you guys liked the video. Please like, subscribe, and comment. If you have any other videos you want me to respond to, please leave it in the comment section or email me. Also, next Sunday there's going to be a live stream for a Q&A with my cubs at 20 hundred. Now if you want to be on live stream with me to ask me questions, please send your request via my email. Thank you for watching. Direwolf out.
have muscles. They couldn't get any uh, women's. Other people have had more success than me due to their like confidence. I'm a beta male. Beta male. Beta male. Beta male. Beta male. You are a cunt. Beta male. I work on myself and I can like build myself up. There you go, fuck the internet.